old school. So nice to see a, a lot of familiar faces, but a lot of people that I don't know. And hopefully after the next 15 minutes or so, you'll uh, know me a little bit better than you already do. Okay, um, I was born 74 years ago. I know, hard to believe. But. <laughs> uh, the third of three boys. Uh, I grew up in a very traditional, conservative Jewish household in Pittsburgh. Um, we kept kosher. We went to synagogue on the holidays, uh, occasionally at other times, but we were not big synagogue goers. The one thing that was great about my youth was my father's father was one of 11 children, and many of them settled in Pittsburgh. So uh, my father must have had 40 or 50 first cousins in the area. And so whenever there was a bar mitzvah, a wedding, uh, you met a lot of extended family, which isn't necessarily true today. But um, it was a, you know, a great childhood. I uh, didn't have a lot of money, but um, there was a large Jewish community and a lot of Jewish friends. And I went to tons of bar and bat mitzvahs. So it was great. I was very active in B'nai B'rith. Um, I was in AZA during high school. And one of the great things that came out of that was that I met my wife. Um, she was in BBG and we lived, according to my parents, at opposite ends of the world. She lived in Monroeville, for any of you who know the Pittsburgh area. It was about 12 miles from my house. And my parents always said, can't you date someone who lives closer? So, but we were married in 1971 uh, in my conservative big synagogue in Pittsburgh. But her rabbi from Temple David in the suburbs also officiated. And Temple David, up until a few years ago, reminded me a lot of Temple Isaiah couple hundred families, nice suburban, but now we are much bigger. Um, not to say that that's a bad thing, but um, it, you know, Temple David was kind of that intimate, uh, like Temple Isaiah that you had back in the day when there were only a few hundred families. Uh, we. Got married in 1971. We moved to Maryland after college. I got a job at Westinghouse. And then we found, too, that um, Columbia was really the place that we wanted to settle and, and raise a family. Um, our kids were born in 76 and 79. And we decided in 1983, you know, it's time to join a temple and, and really introduce uh, both uh, Jason and Amanda to Jewish life and, and temple life. Uh, we discovered TI was a perfect fit. The rabbi at the time, Steve Fuchs, was just about our age. And he had two kids also, seven and four. Said, yep, this sounds like the right place to be. We liked the meeting house. We liked the interfaith concept. You heard about that some this morning with the rabbi sermon. Um, and life was good. Our initial plan was to provide our kids with a, a solid Jewish education and foundation. But Barbara and I soon discovered that we really liked belonging to the community, belonging to this Jewish community, and having lots of Jewish friends and enjoying some of the activities in the temple as well. In 1989, I joined the adult choir. So 35 years later, other than Ann Golcher, I have the second longest tenure in Sheer Isaiah, and I love it. And when the rabbi first came to Temple Isaiah, um, I met with him as part of uh, the outreach where various congregants would meet the rabbi at uh, one of the congregants' homes. And he asked me, what do you like most about Temple Isaiah? And I said, I love being in the choir. 
and I still do today. It's, it's a great experience. Of course, uh, as uh, so often happens, my kids grew up. They do that. They had their B'nai Mitzvah, Bar and Bar Mitzvah. Um, everything w was good, and they started lives of their own. So they moved out, and Barbara and I were kind of at that midlife crossroads. You know, uh, you're almost 50 years old. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? You're empty nesters. Um, and where did Temple Isaiah fit in? Well, um, we were really strongly supportive of the meeting house, the interfaith center concept, and a little skeptical about moving into our own building. Um, there's a lot involved. The dues go up. You know, there's, uh, there's a lot to do when it's, when it's your building. And that loss, as the rabbi mentioned, of that melting pot or chili bowl or, or garden salad or whatever it was, um, it's nice to have that kind of extended community in an interfaith center. Uh, but we also realized that there were a lot of shortcomings of being in the interfaith center. Um, you know, the space, uh, as our congregation is growing, uh, you don't always have the space that you need. You don't always have the facilities that you need because you're sharing it with so many other congregations. So we were on board, fully on board, said this is really the place to be. And looking back and looking at this beautiful building, this is definitely the right place to be for Temple Isaiah. And it's been great to be here for, for the 20 years. So as our congregation grew, um, so did my involvement in temple life. I'm sure many of you have been aware of uh, some of my volunteer activities. I found just about every diverse way of volunteering, not only in Temple Isaiah, but with the Federation as well. Um, over the years, I planted many of the trees that you see around in the garden. We did that a couple of different uh, Sunday afternoons. I made food at Atman's a couple of times at Ravens games. Um, I volunteered for the cold weather shelter, stayed overnight in this building like four times, hated it every time, but kept coming back. Um, I also helped out many, many times with the matzo ball run. And just about every year for the last, I don't know, eight or 10, I've helped with delivering the food after Yom Kippur to Elizabeth House, and I will do it again this Monday. Um, Barbara was not quite as active in Temple Isaiah as I was, but shopping was one of her joys. And anybody who knew Barbara she was not only an avid shopper, but she loved to spend money. <laughs> so uh, when Robin, Robin Gold's here, uh, decided like 12 or 13 years ago that Temple Isaiah needed a gift shop, she started Isaiah's Gifts, and Barbara was all in. You know, where do I sign up? It was not only getting involved with the sales and the Judaica, but she loved going shopping. And she and Robin went on some of these shopping trips. They went to these shows and they found lots of beautiful things for the gift shop. And it turns out my wife was very talented at decorating too. And um, she helped with the display windows and really lent her talents to making the display windows something special for the gift shop. And because of that, there's a plaque outside on the left-hand side of the display windows. If you haven't seen it before, it's a plaque in her memory and the fact that she was so good at that. Uh, we went on the rabbi's trip in 2016 to Israel and uh, Barbara got to be designated as the official shopper for Isaiah's gifts. Robin gave her a credit card and she didn't hold back. 
so she bought many many things during that trip and um, some of it's still in the shop unfortunately <laughs> so. yes um, I retired from my longtime engineering job in 2014 and found that I had a lot more time to do the things that I really like to do. And part of that was volunteering. So um, I stepped up my volunteering. Uh, many of you know Cheryl Kaufman, who started an organization called Kugel Connection, which kept growing and growing, helping people less fortunate, people in the Jewish community in Howard County, and eventually um, Kugel Connection merged with Fed Tov, and it's part of uh, the arm of the Federation. And because of those two organizations, I've had the opportunity to do many things volunteer-wise within the temple and also the Jewish community as a whole. Um, I have been a fixture with our Day Resource Center uh, once a month. And this is a plug, by the way. Uh, the second Wednesday of every month, uh, a group of us serve a meal at the Grassroots Day Resource Center. It's Jessup or Elkridge. It's sort of on the border. And uh, we've been doing this, I've been doing it for over 10 years. Uh, some of the others for even longer. Um, and every month, there's a sign-up genius. So, you know, if you uh, please like to help out, um, uh, we need food for uh, the people at the shelter. So uh, there is a sign-up genius, and you can make food, deliver it to the temple, and we'll take care of the rest. Um, I also developed some long-term relationships with um, shut-ins, people who couldn't get out. Uh, I went and visited, or I uh, did shopping for them, or I took walks with them, and I found that to be uh, very rewarding as well. Um, a longtime congregant's mother, uh, who passed away just about a year ago, I, f I think in fact she had her one-year yurt site just a couple of days ago, um, I got to know her very well because for about five years, I took her twice a month to her Mahjong game at the library. So for those of you who know Lisa Solomon and remember her mom, Roz Rubin, that was a, a great experience for me just to be part of Roz's life. Um, in retirement, I'd say everything was pretty ideal. Um, I became a grampy. I have three wonderful grandchildren, um, and I have lots of time to spend with my grandchildren, with the rest of my family, and also to travel. Many of you know that I'm an avid traveler. I, I love going as many places as I possibly can. Uh, besides the Israel trip, uh, I've been to Europe a dozen or more times. Um, I took two extended trips since my retirement that I never could have taken while I was working because they were six weeks long, one to South America and the other one to Australia, New Zealand, and the South Pacific. Um, I've been to almost every U.S. state, and it is on my bucket list to get those last couple of states and, and finish. And I've been on lots of cruises. I'm sure many of you know that uh, I'm an avid cruiser. Uh, plus, uh, during those early retirement years, with all my volunteering, I was honored to be named 2019 TI Volunteer of the Year. And I'm especially honored because it was the year after Ellen was honored as Volunteer of the Year. So uh, to be in that same company is especially an honor. I've always been an optimist, uh, and I'm going to borrow a little bit from Rabbi Axler's Rosh Hashanah sermon. I truly believe that not only is the glass half full, 
but i also keep adding to it at every opportunity so just when everything seemed perfect in my life it suddenly was it in november of 2019 barbara was diagnosed with cancer she fought valiantly for over a year but she died six months short of our 50th anniversary our last eight months together were very difficult but were also special for the two of us as we were in near total isolation because of covid the care committee certainly helped with things like meals and came and visited occasionally from a distance but we were mostly in isolation and the only other opportunity we had to interact with other people was either going to the hospital or to chemotherapy we did manage one more family trip to our treasured beach house in bethany but on november 22nd 2020 i lost my my wife uh, after 54 years of being a couple. To say it was difficult is, is a great understatement. My family and friends were great comfort during those next months, but my faith was definitely tested. I wondered and I discussed with Rabbi Axler, why do bad things happen to good people? Barbara, as a wife, a mother, a Grammy, a friend, and a pediatric nurse for nearly 50 years, had given so much to so many for her 71 years on this earth. And she had so much to live for. I had lots of questions, but I didn't have answers. So after months of introspection and surrounded by immediate family, as we started to emerge from the pandemic, and with the help of a great grief counseling group that was sponsored by the Federation, I realized I still had so much to live for. I was certainly grateful for those 54 years that I knew my wife and I cherished all the memories of the time we had together. I knew I could continue to enjoy my life. There were so many friends, so much family, and so much I could give back to the community. So I continued to do that. And four years later, I'm still heavily invested in volunteering. This is my second term on the Board of Trustees. The last term, I was your financial vice president, so don't blame me for increases in the commitment. Um, and I've also become, for the last three years, assistant manager of Isaiah's Gifts. <laughs> Go figure. I guess you could say that I'm all in, as well as Barbara. Um, but I also found that life is more than just family, more than just community, and more than just volunteering. Shortly after Barbara died, a friend from the congregation, I tend to get a little emotional, many of you know her, Beth Reiser, reached out to me. I had known Beth casually for over 10 years, but she is also a very good friend of Barbara's uh, and became even friendlier uh, with Barbara after Beth's husband, Monty, died suddenly in 2015. A couple of years later, Barbara and Beth sat next to each other on a bus trip up to see a Broadway show. It was Waitress, by the way. And so they had eight hours, round trip hours, to get to know each other better. They found that in addition to many mutual friends, they also had a lot in common. Little did they know. 
So when Beth first called, she told me that she understood what I was feeling and was there if I wanted to talk. And we did talk and talk for several months. We both liked to take long walks around Columbia's lakes and we shared an occasional meal, although we didn't actually start dating until the end of 2021. However, none of our mutual friends was at all surprised when we did become a couple. 2022 was a great and uplifting year. Beth had wanted to sell her house since before the pandemic, and I asked her to move into my house that I had for over 40 years. We also did some traveling. I showed her around my hometown of Pittsburgh and she met much of my extended family, including many of Barbara's relatives. We took a, a long road trip to New England and uh, we shared a West Coast trip to visit our kids. Beth has a daughter in San Francisco. I have a son in Los Angeles. Everything was great again until it wasn't. Beth had heart issues for nearly 20 years after her own bout of cancer and chemotherapy had damaged her heart in the early 2000s. With the help of a compassionate and caring cardiologist, she managed a very normal life for that whole time. But things changed in late December of 2022. What should have been a very routine procedure at Howard County General resulted in cardiac shock and after a week at the cardiac care units of the University of Maryland and then Johns Hopkins, we received the life-altering news. Her weakened heart would not recover and needed continuous medical interven intervention. She was placed on the transplant list the first week of January. It took seven weeks of waiting to find a new heart, six more weeks of recovery in the hospital, before Beth was able to come home. Although the recovery was just beginning, the last 21 months have been challenging. Lots of ups and downs, but the future is really looking bright. Beth traveled on a plane for the first time this past April. Uh, it, was, it had been 18 months, and we went to visit her family in Chicago for Passover. And we've also had recent wonderful trips to Alaska, to California, and to Las Vegas. The latter, Las Vegas, was a first for Beth, and she didn't lose too much money. <laughs> and the best news of all, we just moved into our own home together in Ellicott City. And we're very close to my daughter and her family, and it's really a new beginning for both of us. You never know what life might throw at you, but at every turn, it's important to be positive. Count your blessings and keep the faith. I'm definitely continuing to add to my half full glass, and I've taken the rabbi's words to heart, and I'm finding ways to be 10% Jewier. Lashana <laughs> Yoter Tova, which I learned means to a better year ahead, which seems much more appropriate during these difficult times. But let's all keep the faith.